Hello and welcome to this After Effects Basics tutorial where we're going to just start to look at the issue of animation in After Effects. Now animation in After Effects uses a process called keyframing and keyframing goes back to the days of the cell animations, Walt Disney and the like, whereby you had two different types of animators. You had your senior animator who was paid all the money who was called your keyframe animator and then you had your tweeners or your lower paid animators who had to make the in-between frames. Now what do I mean by that? When say Goofy had to pitch a baseball, what you needed to do was get somebody to draw the important poses. So the first pose might be with his eyes out glaring at the person he's going to pitch the baseball at. The second important pose might be when he's wound himself right up like a spring with his hand as far back as possible to throw the ball. The third important one might be where he actually comes around and lets go of the ball and it shoots out of his hand. And the last important keyframe might be when he's continued to spin round and wound up completely in the opposite direction and finished. So you've got four keyframes. But of course if you were to watch those one after the other after the other you wouldn't have any sense of movement. You just have four keyframes that play very quickly and rather boring. So what needed to happen is that those keyframes, those starting points, those important points needed to have additional frames placed after them which were interpolations or transitions between the first keyframe and the second keyframe. So the first keyframe might happen at zero on your timeline but the winding up process for Goofy might take a whole second so the second keyframe would be at one second and film was probably done at 24 frames a second at that stage. So your keyframe animator has done two frames out of 24 so therefore there's 22 frames that need to be filled in in the middle. Now generally speaking the way they used to do it is if it wasn't fast movement it would be one picture for every two frames so there would be a total of 12 frames per second however if it was fast action that could be one picture per frame so 24 pictures per second of animation. So the in-between or the tweener artist would take the keyframes and do the transitions between the two so that it looks smooth and it followed properly. So you had your keyframers and your tweeners. Now, After Effects is going to assume that we are the keyframe artists, that we know the beginning point and the end point and the important parts of our animation. And then After Effects is going to become the tween artist. It's going to work out the in-between frames, exactly where they should be, so that you get smooth translation from your first keyframe to your second keyframe. So After Effects is going to give us the ability to create keyframes and then it is going to take care of all the grunt work or the hard work of mathematical work of working out exactly where those in-between frames should be so that the whole thing looks smooth. So how do we create keyframes? Very briefly I'm going to open up a solid that I've created. This is just a blue solid and if you remember in the last tutorial if you twirl down the layer and twirl down transforms you've got your five fixed effects that come with every layer anchor point position scale rotation and opacity and next to those we have these stopwatches and these stopwatches are all to do with animation when we click one of these stopwatches we are telling after effects that we want to animate the property that we have clicked the stopwatch next to so for instance if i click the stopwatch next to scale I would be telling After Effects that I am going to animate a change in scale. Now there is one very important issue about animation that people tend to forget or struggle to get hold of and that is animation takes place over time. When you create your first keyframe at zero on our timeline over here we then need to change the property over time so what we then do is we move the current time indicator and then we would change the property and that's how animation is created because you have done a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe say one second later on so we would be telling After Effects that say scale should be 100% at zero and then some other value at one second 
and After Effects can do the tweening, work out the difference between the two. And that's how animation is going to take place. But it's very important that when you set a keyframe, that you then move the timeline, be it forward or backward in time, to another point and then change the value. So let's actually do one for scale on this one. So I click the stopwatch and you will notice right here in the timeline on the same line as the word scale I have got a yellow or a gold diamond shape. That is my keyframe. So After Effects has now registered that at zero seconds on my timeline scale must be 100%. So it knows it's got a keyframe at this point. If I then go forward one second in time, and I want to make animation, I need to, as well as moving forward in time, change the value. And as soon as I change this value, you will see that another keyframe will appear here. So let's take this all the way down to say 30%, 26%, 27%, and you'll see that I have got a keyframe here. So I've told it that at, I'm gonna hit my home key to get to the beginning, at home, at the beginning, it must be 100%, and then at the next keyframe, it must be 30%. And I just want you to see over here, you've got a little keyframe navigator. So if I click this forward arrow, it's going to go to the next keyframe. If I go to the previous keyframe, I just click this one here. So it's a little navigator, and we'll use that more a bit later on. So we're saying at the first keyframe, its scale must be 100%. At the second keyframe, it must be at 27% on this particular example. After Effects is now going to work out exactly what needs to happen frame by frame. So I've, I'm on a PAL system, so it's 25 frames per second. So over those 25 frames, it's going to work out how to do a smooth animation from full frame to 27%. Okay, so if I go back to the beginning and I hit my space bar, you'll see smooth animation. And there we go. Animation has taken place. Just simply done by me creating the keyframes and After Effects doing the hard work. And the hard work, incidentally, is called interpolation. It is interpolating between the first keyframe and the second one. And here is a definition from Wikipedia of interpolation. It, interpolation is a method of constructing new data points within the range of a discrete set of known data points. Well, my known data points are my two keyframes, and so After Effects is constructing new data points that didn't exist before by this interpolation method. So that's exactly what's taking place here in this example. Now, you're going to be able to see this better if I do an animation with position, and to do that, I'm going to shut down my blue solid, and I'm going to open up my basketball and I'm going to open up my transforms and take my current time indicator back to the beginning because what I'm going to want to happen is this basketball I want to be at this point in time so at zero seconds I want it to be on this side of the screen but then when I get to two seconds I'm going to want this basketball to have shifted over to the other side of the screen now I have seen people occasionally do this they take the current time indicator to zero, they click the stopwatch saying I want to animate position, and then they shift the basketball, and they move their timeline and they wonder why nothing's happened. Well, all you've done is you've set a new starting point because your current time indicator is at zero. So now it's saying the starting point must be this place over here because you're on the keyframe, you're over the keyframe, and the keyframe is selected. So that's not animation. So you go back to the beginning, then you need to go forward your full two seconds. Now you can pull it across and a new keyframe will be created because you're going to change the value having moved the current time indicator. So I'm going to pull it across and at the same time I'm going to hold the shift key because at the moment it's going up and down and I want it to be straight. And if you hold the shift key you'll see it constrains it to only going in one direction. And there we go, we're going to pull it all the way across to this point here. So now animation has been created. And I just want to explain what you're seeing here. This square here is representative of this keyframe down here, the starting keyframe. This square here is representative of the end keyframe. And all of these little dots are the interpolated or the tweeners, the bit that After Effects has created, the in-between data points that they have constructed from the two known data points, to use the Wikipedia definition. So it knew the beginning, it knew the end, it knew the amount of time in which it had to do it, and so it created all these different individual points. This big point here, by the way, and this big point here are handles 
I'll just click and move it. If you want to change your path, we'll be doing this at another time. That's what that handle is all about. So don't worry about that. And then Control Z to drop it back on. But each one of these would represent, now I'm going over two seconds between this one and this one. So I would have two times 25, because I'm 25 frames a second, there'd be 50 points altogether. So that's the animation. And if I just hit my space bar, you'll see it, it moves, which isn't brilliant. Obviously, what I'd want to do next is animate rotation. So I might click the stopwatch for rotation, then move the current time indicator to the end. Incidentally, if you want to get directly over another keyframe and you can't quite work out where it is, I could always use this navigator again because that will definitely go to the next keyframe. So I click and it's over that keyframe. So I know that my rotation's over that keyframe. And let's just do one complete revolution by clicking on the first number and hitting one and return. And then let's go back to the first keyframe and just hit the space bar. And there you go, we've got a rotating ball. Now, just to demonstrate interpolation one more time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand my composition work area to three seconds. I'm gonna move my current time indicator to three seconds. And now I'm gonna shift the ball, shift its position from here back to here, slight angle, just to show that this is half the time that our original animation took place. So it's going from here to here in two seconds, but now I've just moved forward one second, and if I shift it and drag it back to about the same point, it's doing the whole thing in one second, so half the time. Notice the interpolation for each frame. It's only got 25 frames to do previously what it did in 50 frames. So here are your 25 frames, and it's showing us that they are more widely spaced, which is also telling us that it is moving a lot quicker. So when you see them closely packed together, it means it's slow, but when you see them widely spaced like this, it means it's traveling a lot of distance between each of these interpolated frames, and therefore we have speed. And if I want to, I can also add another rotation for the basketball, so I can just click that, hit two, return, so we've now got two rotations. So let's just play that back. Go slowly along the bottom and then much faster along the top. And just leave that cycling. So that is how you do animation. And that is how you can understand an animation path such as this. That these squares represent the keyframes and the individual dots are the interpolated or tween frames that After Effects has worked out so that it gets a smooth animation from one point to another. Now lastly, let's just do one more example with our blue solid. So let's turn our blue solid on with the eyeball, open it up, and at the moment we've got an animation of scale. I'm going to just turn that off and start again. Incidentally, you only click the stopwatch when you want to start animation. You don't click the stopwatch unless you want to get rid of your keyframes. So if I click the stopwatch now, they're all going to go. If they go and you think, oh my goodness, what have I done? Remember you have the Control Z function, Command Z on a Mac and you can bring them back again, but I actually want to get rid of them because I'm going to take my scale down to, say, 30%, and I'm going to do an animation for four properties, so position, scale, rotation, and opacity. And then I'm going to go forward one second, and I'm going to change all of those. So I'm going to change its position, move it across and up. I'm going to change its scale, I'm going to make it smaller, I'm going to change its rotation, make it a slightly more interesting angle, and I'm going to reduce its opacity to say 50%. 49 will do. So it's not hard work for After Effects. After Effects can work it out. Again, you see your first keyframe and your last keyframe for a position and your interpolated frames in the middle, and animation has taken place. And you can create spin-ons and spin-offs, and you can do this with any layer. And when you start adding effects to your layer, you will see stopwatches against most of the properties of all the effects that you apply, which means you can animate those as well, which is where the real power in After Effects start to kick in. So that is just a very, very basic introduction to what animation is. So you can see how After Effects can interpolate between the keyframes that you give it. In future tutorials, we'll be looking at principles of animation, we'll be looking at different types of keyframes, how you can animate on a path, and all kinds of different bits and pieces. But this should get you going. I recommend you create a solid and start to have some fun. My name's Andrew Devis. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.